Hello. Hello. Hi, Tracy. Hello. Uh, this is Robert. Can anybody hear me? Hello. Hello. Yep, I can hear you. This is Neva. Okay. Uh, huh. I don't have video because the host unvideoed me. Yeah, I don't either. Okay. Tom, um, you're you're sharing your screen. How do I get out of it? So right in the bottom in the middle, there's a share screen button. It should be able to stop. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for it. Okay, I turned uh, the webcam video back on. Okay. Yep, on top. Uh, there you go, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Hello. Ooh. Nice clear picture there, boss. So much video or audio, though. <laughs> Only pretty good here. I couldn't get you anything at home, so that's why I came back to the office. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, how did I get my picture on? <laughs> Turn okay, that camera on the bottom corner. left hand corner. It says stop what? video. Uh, stop video, start video. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. Hey, Tom. I like, hey, I know how to turn this thing on and off. <laughs> Everything in between is difficult. I agree, Tom. <laughs> we'll get the hang of it. My, my youngest daughter gives me lessons once a week. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm serious about that. On my, on both my iPad and my computer, we get together once a week, and she says, "All right, Dad, this is how you do this." <laughs> I love it. Can I borrow her? Do what? Can I borrow her? I, I oh, too. she she doesn't charge very much. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I see we have a lot of items on the agenda, but it looks almost like it's all for the county. Yep. Good. Linda, do we have people not going to be here? Well, I think we're all here except for Rebecca. Um, and oh, Steve. I don't see Stephen. Yeah, we're missing two. Um. Let me see if I can. Oh, hey, Mike. Yes, yes sir. sir. Before we get started, thank you for the book. You're welcome, sir. I thought you enjoy it. An interesting note on the first page of the introduction, 
it men mentions the location of Gurney Station. That's the house where Stonewall Jackson died. Uh, I visited that house, saw the bed he died in. It's, the house is still furnished just like it was at the time they brought him there after the Battle of Chancellorsville. Wow. So I thought you'd enjoy the book. Oh, you bet. I, I already enjoyed it from the first page. <laughs> it's a slightly different take on what the man did. I see Stevens here now. Um, I don't see Rebecca yet. Well, we still got, by my watch, we still got a couple of minutes. Yep. I don't know what the chairman has. I got 6.31 on my phone. Well, if it's 6.31, why don't you bang the hammer and let's get started. Yep. <laughs> Because your watch is slow, and do we have to go by your watch? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, give Rebecca a few seconds here. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Steve. See. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? Hey, Steve. Today? Shut this down. Twelve. Hmm. Well, we got a lot of items on the agenda. Let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance flag. to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. To, the republic to the republic for which it stands. Hey, One nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, see you in, see you in a bit. Bye. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the meeting in October. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that the uh, minutes for October the 6th be approved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, let's proceed to vote then. Candelaria? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Butler? Yes. Creamy? Yes. Um, first item of business tonight is the cash and lieu fees for 2021. Tracy, would you like to highlight that, please? Uh, sure. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yeah. I feel like I should just ask every time, just in case. Thank so, you for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the cash and lieu fees are set every year, and they're updated based on recent sales data of vacant land within five miles of the city limits. Um, the cash and lieu fee is where a developer would pay cash instead of donating the 5% of the land area, which the city often would prefer the cash over a piece of land in a, the event they don't really want to manage the land area. Um, the average, this is calculated using the average value of sales prices, and again, that's vacant land within five miles outside the city over the course of five years. And the data comes from the county. The county staff pulls this from their assessor's data based on sales. And last year it was set at 14,500 for the value of the acre of land and the fee was set at $725. This year the <clears throat> vacant land sales went up to $14,775 and it's been customary for us to round this up. So Staff is recommending we round it up to $14,800 and that will set the fee at $740. So the Planning Commission reviews this information and then makes a recommendation to City Council to incorporate this in the updated fee schedules, which they will adopt by ordinance when that happens here in a couple weeks. Any questions? This cash in lieu fee, Tracy, <clears throat> where does the money go? So what does the city do with it? Does it go into a general fund? Is it allocated by percentage to certain districts? 
Can you tell us where the money goes, please? Uh, right now, I I think it's supposed to be set aside for um, you know basically purchases of land for open space parks and I believe schools, if needed. Um, the truth is, is since I've worked for the city of Cortez, we haven't had a major subdivision and a donation of cash in lieu. So I don't, you know, with the fact that finance is kind of cleaning up the the ledgers, I'm assuming when we do get cash in lieu in the future, it's going to go into its own location. But that's my understanding. Um, so just, just for some background, every municipality that I know and county as well um, does do a uh, donation of land per, um, oftentimes it's, um, it's triggered with a residential development, but it's basically the idea that, um, that there's some nexus in between like a growth or increase in development and a need for um, having facilities like parks, open space, and schools. So um, that is a very common thing. And um, usually, like if like if with the city of Cortez, it go it sh it normally goes into like a pool for open space or park funds for park improvements. Or it depends. Um, the other the other common usage is to set aside fees for, or, or land dedication or fees for schools. Um, and I noticed in our um, land use code, it mentions schools and parks and open space in three different areas. And um, anyways, it's just something that just about every, every local government does require. Um, and so for the city of Cortez, I'm pretty sure it should just get set aside into their open space fund or parks fund. Yeah, I, I know that's a rule somewhere. I don't think that location of where the money goes is in the actual land use code, but it, it does state um, basically parks and schools. So it's, <clears throat> it's money for the schools that is going directly to the schools to use for whatever they deem fit or is is it for um, basically the spaces to to put schools on uh so Tracy, let's see Tracy, yeah? this is mike isn't there a portion of it when we collect it goes to the school district in lieu of them having their own impact fee what i'm remembering so when you set this fee and we collect it, I'm, I'm not sure where it goes within the city, but I thought a portion was allocated to the school district as just cash. Um, you know, I don't know that that's lined out in our code. Um, I'm not seeing that in particular. It states requirements for open space, school sites, park and recreational areas are intended to ensure, et cetera. And then, um, you know, it keeps referencing land dedicated or otherwise set aside for open space, school sites, and park and recreational areas. So, um, you know, again, you know, we haven't had to really bet this after a fee has been provided for a very long time, and I can't speak to what happened in the past. Um, how about we, um, I research this and get you folks an answer more specific as to what happens. I can check then with uh, Mr. Doherty and Mr. Burkett and make sure we all are on the same page and follow where the money goes. Would that I like that idea. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thank you. Any other questions for Tracy? I guess so, I would Tracy, have... though, you still need a recommendation from us, right, for the city council for the fee increase? That's correct. Um, this is required by the code every year to update the fee. So, I mean, we can certainly work on with finance getting the, you know, just a policy or a protocol in place, just so everyone has the specificity of where the money's going to land. Um, so Tracy, are you looking for a motion to uh, approve the fee for 2021? That is correct. Which, then it just um, gets re referred to the council, right? Yes. Yeah. 
So I guess I would entertain a motion as such. Mr. Chairman, I recommend that the council adopt the value of 14,800 per acre for calculating the cash in lieu fee option for granting property for public land dedication equating to a $740 per acre fee. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Um, I'll, I'll make this one comment. I, I personally feel like this is when, when one of the biggest issues that we have, not only in the city of Cortez right now, but in Montezuma County is affordable housing and houses have to go on top of land at some point and <clears throat> building homes right now, particularly in the city of Cortez, I mean, there's use tax, there's all of your various permits, there are tap fees, you name it, whatever, probably to about the tune of around $20,000 before you can even break ground. And that is, those are fees, every fee that we add and we increase goes directly to the people trying to purchase the home. So with that being said, <clears throat> I personally feel like this is just, just an increase that is going to further go down the line to the people who are ultimately trying to purchase homes or people who will potentially be renting homes. And it's one more added thing on top of people who are already struggling to find affordable housing. So without one knowing where the money is going and exactly where it's allocated and what is being used for specifically, I feel like it's an additional burden upon the people who will ultimately be given the fee at the end, which is the end user of the home. So I don't, I personally don't like the idea of it period. And, and that's the, those are my two cents for the record, if you will, is it basically it's, it's an additional tax. It's taxation without representation. And um, I'm, I'm not in favor of it. Well, so um, with Tabor and everything, because you can't really have taxation without representation in the state of Colorado, it's actually a fee in lieu of service. And um, the idea in most municipalities, it actually um, is tied to every single family housing unit that gets um, developed where you get a fee in lieu or an actual dedication. So in Cortez, the fact that it's only tied to a subdivision, um, really makes it very rare that this is ever collected because it's, most of, of Cortez is already platted. So I see your point, but I don't think that that's actually the case here in Cortez. And um, ideally it should probably get earmarked for parks and rec and um, open space. And possibly if it goes to schools, I'm not really sure because that's not necessarily laid out in our land use code where it is sometimes laid out specifically. But um, I, don't, I don't really feel that it's overburdensome at all. In fact, um, I've seen other communities have a much larger burden um, in um, trying to get rights before they develop. And again, um, this is just for subdivisions. It's not tied to new residential permits, which is actually a lot more common and a lot more cumbersome. Yeah, Mike, you'd have to research that. It seems to me this came up when Tom and I were way back on city council and it was just made to guarantee there was going to be a certain amount of open space. And if there wasn't open space enough available in that subdivision, then they could do this uh, in lieu of the open space. I'm remembering something similar, sir, but it's been so long since we've ever collected it. And uh, yeah. I do remember something about the schools getting a piece of this fee that we get so they wouldn't have to charge their own for some reason. And I, um, I'll have to find that. So Re Stephen, Rebecca, you thank you. Rebecca, thank you for all of your comments. Um, I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, maybe taxation was the wrong word. It still is a fee that's collected that will ultimately be passed down to the end user. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? And we're just recommending to council. 
Uh, any other discussion then? Let's go ahead and vote, Linda. Butler? Yes. Candelaria? No. McDaniel? Yes. Levy? Yes. Remy? Yes. Next item, uh, I guess we start a whole list of county developments and uh, let's see, Tracy, I guess you're on the first one here. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Um, let me... Okay, so this is a county project that's in, it's immediately outside of the city on property just south of Montezuma Cortez High School. Um, on your screen, I believe that's um, this property up in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah. This is where County Road J was extended over to 27. It's just south of that. The applicant wants to subdivide the property into 34 lots of approximately a half acre each. The master street plan does show uh, count what would be seven street extended, but now County Road J would be an 80 foot right of way. And according to the County GIS, that width there where you can see that road alignment is 135 feet. So the property of the applicants subdivision does not need to dedicate any additional right of way because there's already adequate right of way for the possible futures of this road, um, given that there's 135 feet. So that is staff's recommendation to authorize the chair to sign the plat for compliance with the master street plan. Any questions for Tracy? Um, guess I would entertain a motion to approve me signing the plat then. Mr. Chairman, I uh, make the motion to authorize you, uh, authorize the PNZ chairman, which is you, to sign the plat for the with signature block number one for compliance with the master street plan. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Tracy, when does county PNZ meet? Is that November 12th? That's correct. So pretty soon here, we'll want to forward any comments on this or any other of the other projects before you tonight. Um, so any discussion on the motion on the table? Or comments we want to add to it? Okay, uh, I guess we'll proceed to vote. Did we receive a second? Yeah, I thought. I think Steve did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That was me. Sorry, I missed sorry I missed that. McDaniel? Yes. Levy. You're muted. Sorry. Uh Specialty? yes. Butler? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. Remy. Yes. Uh next item is another county development and Neva. Is you're up. All right, let me share my screen here. Um, share. Okay. So this is a county project just north of the city limits. Um, Jared and Colette Wyatt have applied to the county for a single, single lot minor development of property located at 26833 Road L. And so this is um, almost adjacent to Highway 145 and uh, uh, County Road L and City Road Alamosa. Um, applicants proposed to split off that one nine acre lot um, to the east of the property. Um, and they have requested to rezone the property from AR three to nine um, or two AR three to nine and AR 10 to 34 for the remainder property. Uh, the uses in this area include residential and agricultural uses. Um, 
the requested rezoning would be compatible with those densities. The um, Montezuma water will service the new lot. And again, uh, Road L is depicted on the adopted streets plan. The uh, new lot would access County Road L. And this is a project that the Montezuma County Planning Commission will hear on November 12th. Do you guys have any questions or comments on this application? Anything you want to forward on to the uh, county commissioners? Thank you, Neva. Um, is there any indication of what they're going to do with the close to 40 acres? No, there's nothing in the staff, uh, in the county packets that indicate that okay. what they're going to do. <clears throat> any questions, comments for Neva? Uh, oh, I guess I should state there is a residence um, on that 40 acres. Yeah. Uh, no more questions. I guess I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to direct the chair to sign the plat for the single lot development on property owned by Jared and Colette Wyatt, located at 26833 Road L Cortez, Colorado, consisting of one approximately nine acre lot on property in Montezuma County within the three mile urban influence area with signature block number one for compliance with the master streets plan. Tom seconds it. Motion. Tom seconds it. Uh, we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, let's proceed to vote then. Levy? Yes. Butler? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Remy? Yes. Uh, next item. Another county development and Neva, I guess you get to highlight us on that one too. All right. Um, so this is a single lot de minor development uh, for William and Carol Reynolds at 29467 Road N, Cortez, Colorado. The property is approximately 40 acres in size and the applicants are requesting AR3 to 9 and AR35 plus zoning. Um, the application was pretty unclear. I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. Uh, the application, the maps attached to the application, the, what I'm sh sharing on your screen, suggests that a smaller lot will be created from the 40 acre lot, um, but that, that's not explicitly stated in the application. Um, and I'm unsure what the red blob is down there with the arrow pointing to it. So uh, I, I just, I'm not quite sure what's happening. However, the city master street plan does not extend to this area of the county. Um, so it won't have an impact on our, on our master street plan. And uh, other than that, I'm just, um, I'm assuming that they're pulling out the parcel that has a piece of the parcel that has the existing home and the remainder is going to be a new lot. Um, right again. Um, this is going to the County Planning Commission on November 12th. So. Did you say that it was not within the three mile influence? It is within three mile influence area, but this part of Road N is not part of our master street plan. It's not depicted on our master street plan. Any questions for Neva? This area is east of east of town. Guess if there's no uh, questions or anything, I would entertain a motion to. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to direct the chair to sign the plat for the single lot development on property owned by William and Carol Reynolds located at 29467 Road in Cortez, Colorado, on property in Montezuma County within the three mile urban influence area with signature block number one for compliance with the master street plan. Is there a second? 
I'll second. second. Hi. Go ahead, Re Re Becky. That's fine. Rebecca seconds it. Uh, so, any further discussion? Got to we'll proceed to vote then. Butler? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Levy? <clears throat> yes. Remy? Yes. Uh, next is item E, another county development. Um, All right, another county development. Okay. All right, so this is a two lot moderate subdivision um, submitted by Joyce Johnson for a property located at 25911 Road P. Uh, the lot is 9.79 acres, and the applicant has proposed to split the lot into one 3.5 acre property and one six uh, acre lot to the north um, of the, to the, the north part of the parcel there. Um, so this property, uh, I don't know, you guys might know it with the, the pipe people in there. Um, that doesn't really have anything to do with the project, but it's just an interesting you know, Montezuma County thing. Um, so the, applica the application doesn't show any access to that northern parcel, um, the proposed northern parcel, uh, but the application does state that the applicant will place an easement to the new tract, uh, possibly along the east boundary line of the property. Um, the City Master Street plan does not extend to this area of the county. Uh, and again, this will be reviewed on November 12th. Yeah. And staff does recommend that the chairman sign the signature block for compliance with the master street plan. Can we recommend approval as long as they continue to decorate the pipe people for Christmas every year? <laughs> that, was like, that was such a highlight and I'm so bummed it hasn't happened in a couple of years but like when I lived in Rico we would like come down and tour Road P for that it was so cool anyways sorry you always make that as a recommendation <laughs> probably not but I love that I do too any other Comments. Obviously, they're going to have uh, ingress and egress. They don't have to go through the county, and they'll have to figure that out. Right. <clears throat> right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to direct the chair to sign the plat for the two lot minor subdivision as requested by Joyce Johnson for property located at 25911 Road P. Dolores, Colorado, within the three mile urban air influence area with signature block number one for compliance with the Master Streets plan. I second motion. the motion. Tom seconds it. Um, any further discussion? Let's uh, vote on the motion then. Levy? Yes. Butler? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. Reamy? Yes. Next is item F, another county development. And Neva, you're still up. Okay. Um, well, this is uh, the county received an application for high impact permit and special use application for um, 7006 Highway 491. Um, this is the old m, &M truck stop. The applicant is proposing to open a Lugs truck stop at this site. Um, and according to their plans, they are going to demolish the building and put in a new truck stop here. Um, the site's just over five acres. The applicant is requesting uh, heavy industrial zoning and parcels in this area uh, consist of heavy and light industrial zoning with a scattering of uh, residential zoning. Um, the application states the county's traffic threshold will be exceeded, um, meaning over 15 vehicle round, 
15 nuchal round trips per day, uh, but no statement of Medicaid was provided as required by the county's land use code. The site does not have direct access to the state highway um, and is proposing to use two existing access points from road G. Um, however, the section of road G is, is um, owned by CDOT, so I'm assuming they'll need some sort of CDOT uh, access permits for that site. Um, there wasn't a special use application included um, with the high impact permit application, so I, we don't know what's going on with that. Um, but there is no motion required for this review. Uh, the, you guys can recommend planning staff to forward any recommendations um, to the county commission uh, if you find it appropriate. So. so that's all I have for this one. So you're, I'm understand we do not need a motion. No, you don't need a motion for this. No. Right. Yeah, not, wants to make not a, a subdivision or a plot or anything. Okay. Anybody want to add a comment to the county? Um, this is a major oh. gateway to our community as it's the first um, major intersection when you're coming from the airport. Other than the fact that I'm glad it's no longer going to be a blighted piece of property and somebody's going to occupy it. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any consideration or ideas regarding some kind of gateway design or um, just kind of the impact it has as far as a entrance to um, what people consider the, the Cortez community. I'm just throwing that out there for discussion. Well, anything would be an improvement over what's down there now, Rebecca. I agree with Mr. Butler. I'm excited about the dog park. <laughs> well, just think, just think we may get a Popeye's chicken in there in the <laughs> You know, that would some, be something great. Something new different. <laughs> yeah, if no one's ever had Popeye's chicken, they don't yeah. know what they've been missing. That's right, Tom. <laughs> uh, and this um, is, uh, I would imagine, part of the love uh, visitor stop chain that's all along the expressways. Am, am I correct in that, Neva? That's what I assume, yeah. I, I think yeah. with the it trademark like sign there, uh, Neva and Tom, I think that, yeah, yes. I, I'll shut up. Sorry, right. sorry, Neva. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a definite, a definite plus for us because it's like uh, Rebecca states, that's uh, people coming into Cortez from, from not only the airport, from the, uh, the south from uh, New Mexico and Arizona passing through Cortez, that M&M has been a terrible eyesore for a number of years now. So given the fact that we might get rid of an eyesore and we probably all agree, um, any other comments before we move on? I have one. Uh, Neva, can we ask the county or the, ask the county to ask the applicant why they want um, heavy industrial when uh, light industrial would would suffice for a truck stop. Oh yeah, we can we can ask. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. I, I, I to me the county is this is just a personal opinion and my thoughts, but they're throwing that heavy industrial zoning. Um, out on almost everything that's new that's involved with everything and I that's that makes me uncomfortable considering how far it goes so I would just like to know if they if they thought that the light industrial would be good enough for a truck stop I think that would be a better zoning argument but that's just me All right. so we'll add that to a comment I think that's a great point Lance I think especially since that area down there says the soil has been contaminated forever that <laughs> we shouldn't shouldn't add to it but that's just that's just like I said thank you Becky. Well it's also listed on um, CDPHE's um, contaminated sites so right. um, whoever is going to have to be in the chain of title is going to have to deal with a lot of cleanup issues right. um, which is 
it's good that it's a if I'm not mistaken, that's being cleaned up as we speak. Excavation and and reclamation has already begun. Right. That's that's part of the process in order to be able to build on it. And I don't know if they 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 would qualify for Brownfields redevelopment funding too. So there might be some EPA incentives for grant monies to to develop this pro, uh, particular parcel because it has been listed. But um, it's definitely um, you know even though you're doing a cleanup as whenever you're dealing with in ground storage of fuels. Um, there's always a leakage issue and um, for potential additional contamination. So um, it's, it's, it makes sense that, um, you know, light industrial would be more appropriate for this site. But so I think that that's definitely a worthy question, but um, I'm, I'm really glad that somebody's wanting to do something with this Brownfield site. I think that's important. Okay. And just for your information, um, the state of Colorado has a fuel tank fund, I think, uh, is what I call it, that also kicks in to pay for this cleanup. And that may be part of where the money's coming from. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, right. I guess Do you guys can... want to recommend any landscaping or anything? <laughs> Great point. Um, I don't see any proposed on here at all. Um, certainly, like I can't imagine why you'd want to walk a dog park, park or go to the dog park without any shade. But you know, yeah, I mean, definitely. there might be landscaping. This is just such a preliminary plan; it's hard to tell. Um, I'm sure they can at least plant some grass. Yeah. <laughs> okay, given those discussions, let's move on to item G. Uh, Mita, okay. County Development. Is that me? Okay, Kaminsky. Okay, let me scroll down to that one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So this is west of town. Um, applicants Edward and Carrie Joe Kaminsky have applied to the county for a two lot moderate subdivision located at 12665 Road 23. Um, the lot is Almost 18 acres and the applicants have proposed to split the lot into one three acre lot with an existing residence and one 14 acre lot. They've requested AR 3 to 9 zoning and AR 10 to 34 zoning on the lots. Um, the city master street plan does not extend to this area of the county. Um, I said that twice in my report, so, you know, just to nail that in there. Um, and the county planning commission will review this project next week. So, uh, uh, a couple months ago, oops, a couple months ago, P and Z, or maybe it was just last month, um, you guys looked at the Diff and Daffer property just north of there, and they did a, I think, a moderate two lot subdivision as well. Um, okay, um, that's all I have on this project. <laughs> Kind of looks right. like a flagpole the way that they're having that skinny little portion attaching to the road. Um, it is, yeah. Just kind of a pet peeve on um, subdivisions when they do that. But I mean, there's not much we can do about it. So, Neva, did you, and I assume it was not within our three mile plan? We're within our three mile area, but the master street plan doesn't go out that far uh, okay. west. So would we still want a motion to sign the plat? Yeah, it'll come with the master street um, signature block. Okay. Any questions for Neva on this one? 
Yes, I would entertain a motion then. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to direct the chair to sign the plat for the two lot minor subdivision as requested by Edward and Carrie Joe Comiskey for property located at 12665 Road 23 within the three mile urban influence area with signature block number one for compliance with the master street plan. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Last second, said. Uh, any further discussion? And let's proceed to vote. McDaniel? Aye. Or yes. Levy? Yes. Butler? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. Remy? Yes. And then we have an item H. Also, the county development. Um, and Tracy, you get to highlight us on this one. Okay. Um, let's see. I can get you up a air photo. Hang on a sec. There we go. So this project came through a while back. Um, I don't have the packet up in front of me, but the applicant came in last Friday and left the Mylar with the city staff looking to get a signature for compliance with the master streets plan. So when the planning commission reviewed this project, it's the Moen, I don't know what it's called, but it's, they basically are putting uh, four cabins on their property and it's a PUD and I think it's a general PUD in the county zoning and they um, were required to also file a plat. And so we did not make a motion for the chairperson to sign that plat when we reviewed this several years ago. I think it was three years ago. So she, she's just trying to get the signature on the plat so she can record it and be done. I guess there was some concern that all the pieces hadn't happened when they received approval three years ago. So I, staff's just, asking the planning commission to make a motion that the chair is authorized to sign the Moen plat for compliance with the master street plan. So the county's already approved the uh, development or whatever? They're already built. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not really a subdivision. Um, I think they're B&Bs, uh, Tracy. Right, yeah rental cabins yeah. essentially you know she we just got this friday at 3 30 um <laughs> so we slapped it on the agenda for tonight yesterday morning and we don't have much information mm -hmm. other than the former review by planning commission where there were no concerns but we did not have an official motion to sign the plat so okay. that's what we are seeking tonight um it's mostly just cleaning it up a little bit Correct. Okay. Any questions for Tracy? I um, guess I'd entertain a motion then. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to recommend approval of the GPUD request for zoning for property located in Montezuma County at 26965 Road N within the three mile urban influence area and further recommend, well, they're already there in uh, the signing of the signature block. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Sorry, Butler? Yes. Candelaria? Yes. Levy? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Remy? Yes. And then moving on to discussion items, discussion regarding the historic preservation section. Uh, Tracy. Okay, so the Historic Preservation Board has been seeking to amend the Historic Preservation section of the Land Use Code for some time. They were told that that would be updated with the comprehensive update of the Land Use Code, but as you all know, that did not pass. So 
recently they inquired about just moving their section forward independently. And the reasons are that the current section is a little bit disorganized. Um, it's not terrible, it's just it would read more clearly if we use the revisions that were done over a period of a couple years. They began discussions on that change in about 2016 and the State Historic Preservation Office reviewed the proposed changes back in 2016 and again in 2018. So that section has been reviewed numerous times with our board and other agencies. The changes are basically um, to streamline their powers and duties, to change the requirement to designate individual sites and structures by ordinance so that it's just a resolution that would change. Uh, designate the properties as historic. Um, historic districts would still be required to go through an ordinance approval in order to designate a district, which would be a, a grouping of properties as opposed to just one individual property. There is language that is proposed to clarify what a contributing property is. So within a historic district, you would identify all the properties in a in a geographic area that are eligible to be listed for historic designation. So there's um, properties that are listed and then there are properties that could be listed if the landowner wanted them to be listed and those would be considered contributing properties. Within a historic district, contributing properties have to go through design review in order to make structural changes to the structure. So whether that individual property owner had actually listed it or not, once a district's designated, they would be required to come before the Historic Preservation Board in order to make changes to their building, which is why we wanted to add that language to the code so it was clear if a district was created that this would be required for the contributing properties. I hope that all made sense. Um, that's kind of a little clarification. It doesn't change the rules, but it does make it clearer to the public that that would be required. Um, and then mostly it's just organizational, just moving paragraphs around so that they are grouped together with other like subjects. Um, you know, we did extend some of the timelines between a historic preservation board recommendation and the time that council needs to make a decision on it. And then we did add public notice for designation of a historic district, which is not required by the current code. And then, um, we clarified that the Historic Preservation Board would be the authority on historic alterations to listed properties, which is implied by our current code, but the language is not very clear. Um, so I think the intent was to get feedback from Planning Commission and then take this back to Historic Preservation Board tomorrow night for discussion. And then ultimately we would send the draft back up to the state and say, here's our final draft. Do you have any more changes you'd like to make. So tonight, I think we're just giving the Planning Commission an update and seeing if you guys have any thoughts or concerns about this coming forward. And if you have any desires for a public outreach process. This is green. Um, this isn't ready f without some more work on going forward. The city's had enforcement questions and disagreements as to how this all works and the building department hasn't always enforced it when they issue building permits and things and so um this ordinance hasn't been this part of it hasn't been vetted and coordinated with the other building code provisions since i guess 2018 is what i'm hearing so i that's going to be something i think i need to do in conjunction with the planning and building department is making sure this is all cohesive and coordinated. Um, we don't have a real great history with this part of the land use code, um, misconceptions and other things. So I wanna make sure this time, um, I think Tracy's right, we need to move forward with it and I don't have a problem with it, but I just, um, I'd like to come back to you folks with it sometime after the first of the year so we can make sure that it's all correct and ready to go. This, this isn't something we need to rush through. Um, it, it's got more IRS implications sometimes and other things if you get tax credits. And I recognize it's just the local designation, but it's a first step in the process. 
And so I want to make sure everything is dialed in as far as that's concerned. Thank you, Mike. Well, I would assume that this would clarify and streamline the whole process a bit. Is that a misnomer or not? Uh, it's unknown to me at this time because I have slept since the last time we did this back in 2018 and the land use code went forward and um, this wasn't really a big concern and I really just want to look at everything and coordinate it and make sure it's better. I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I just want to make sure, um, you know, dot my I's, cross my T's and make sure we're all where we need to be. So would we need to wait until January before we pass it on to this uh, Historic Preservation Board? Um, no, we're I reviewing this tomorrow. Well, they can review it, but I'm saying it's probably not coming forward as an ordinance um, based on their recommendations until after I look at it. I mean, I'm, I, John can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see council getting into this much before January, early February on their agendas. Um, and I'm wanting to make sure this thing is correct because it keeps um, just my history with it. There's little things that keep bugging people. Um, some of the council people have expressed concerns before about um, what happens if you make a repair that's, that changes it, much like that house that recently got put into a historic designation. Um, you know, do you lose your designation? Um, if people do that, um, are we supposed to be undesignating them by city action? I mean, these are things I wanna make sure everybody understands and is uh, agreed on before we get them. And then all of a sudden go, well, we don't wanna do that. Um, so that's some of my concerns. So Tracy, didn't you say that really it only had um, an impact on a district, which we don't actually have a historic district in Cortez anyways? What, what specifically wouldn't have an impact? Well, I thought you said that um, for the most part, legislative changes aren't represented in this. It's more of like an editorial cleanup and just making things more consistent and cohesive as opposed to actually changing any requirements other than for um, buildings in a district, but we don't have a district. So the only ch change change, um, I mean, there's minor tweaks, but the, the changes that would, so the language about the contributing properties is just clarifying what's already required to be a CLG, a certified local government in the district. So um, the, the main change is changing the, the designation of the individual sites and structures being designated by ordinance to being designated by resolution. Um, and then, you know, we basically, I did clarify the review process for historic alterations be conducted by the Historic Preservation Board only, which has again been the historic way that that's been conducted. So we just wanted to explicitly state that. Um, I, but there's no review criteria being set forth. So, so from my understanding, um, if somebody wants to be designated or have their property be designated this only the only change really that's happening is instead of a two hearing process through an ordinance it's going through a resolution process which is one hearing so it makes it a lot easier for a property owner to get their property designated and and that the historic preservation board instead of it going in front of planning and zoning it's going in front of the Historic Preservation Board for review, but there's no set criteria on the structure to define um, any kind of changes. We did not change the criteria that you would weigh a property against to be designated. Is that what you're asking me to clarify? Right. So the criteria for, you know, things that make you eligible for listing are not changing. 
like I say, I'm not having big problems, but I just need the time to make sure everything fits with everything else we have instead of just advancing this on its own. Cause it could be more than just editorial changes. There could be some effective substance just by how you do the process. Sure. Um, I guess this was an information item and we'll just continue to stay updated on it. Thank you, sir. Well, is there, there's not any timeline or uh, schedule of events that this needs to take place, is it, Tracy? Uh, no, there's nothing set in stone. I think everyone on the Historic Preservation Board would be um, enthusiastic about some activities promoting this moving forward. So, um, you know, as long as we keep discussing it and keeping it, you know, elevated beyond sitting on the shelf, I think that would be ideal. I think, you know, kind of really right now, we could just focus on an outreach plan and, and, and you know, in the meantime, ensure that the language is, is the best it can be. Well, it would be my recommendation that uh, we follow the advice of the city attorney and uh, give this thing a little more time for him to study and come up with any possible conflicts to the wording. I think that's the direction we're moving, Tom. Well, since city council is the one that actually directs the um, city attorney, I guess that's up to them. Um, and being the planning and zoning person on historic preser on the historic preservation board, um, we are reviewing this tomorrow, and um, we've already looked at it before. And so we're just revisiting this. And as Tracy mentioned, this has been something that's been going on for four years. So <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I'm I'm fine with everything being on a delayed process. So this is just informational, and um, I don't see any problem with with um, the Historic Preservation Board reviewing it tomorrow. I'm sure if the board reviews it and has any comments, they'll pass it on to Tracy. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, item six. Uh, you saw the building permits listed for October. Item seven. Do we have any other items of business? Just out of curiosity, I know that a few weeks ago we had planned on having a workshop in regard to the Master Streets plan and that got pulled off. Or do we have any intention of moving forward on, on reviewing that or where, where are we at with that? Yes, uh, staff has been meeting continuously on it. Um, we do still hope to have a workshop on that soon. Um, I, you know, I think we have a pretty good map <laughs> and, you know, the draft language that you all still have hasn't really been changed. No one suggested any edits at the staff level. So I, I would like to see us have a workshop, hopefully in December, but, um, you know, I don't want to speak for the entire city staff group, but I believe that could happen. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Well, let's just keep that in the uh, mindset and we'll uh, try to get a workshop set up sometime. Yep. Any other items of business and comments? Any previous business? And I guess I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. Linda, you can figure out who did that. <laughs> um, uh, Candelary, uh, Butler moved and Candelary a second. Uh, that'll work. <laughs> okay. McDaniel? Yes. Butler? Yes. Levy? No, just kidding. Yes. Candelaria? <laughs> yes. Creamy? Yes. <laughs> Thank good you, everyone. Night. Everybody have a good night, everybody. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Tom. <laughs> Good night. Good night. That's great. Good night.